Well, thank you very much. Please. We had a spectacular morning, and it's an honor being with the Prime Minister and Mrs. Morrison. Thank you very much. Australia is a fantastic country and a brilliant ally. We just spent a lot of time together with our representatives, and they, uh, they get along very well, and we're doing a lot of deals. And we talked military, we talked trade, we talked about everything you can talk about. And uh, we uh, came to the same conclusion, I think, in every case. But I just want to say uh, it's an honor having both of you here. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a truly great country, and I don't think we've ever had a better relationship than we have right now. And tonight, we're going to have something very special in the Rose Garden. And uh, based on all of that money we spend on all of that weather-predicting equipment, they're saying no chance of rain. Let's see if that's right. If it is, we'll run right back into this room. Uh, but we're going to have a fantastic evening. And uh, First Lady, thank you very much. You worked very hard on this. So uh, it's not going to rain. It's going to be a beautiful evening. And great job. Really great job, honey. Thank you. Please. Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. And Mrs. Trump, we thank you also very much for the incredibly warm and generous welcome that uh, Jenny and I and our delegation have had uh, here in Washington and, and this great home of the American presidency and, indeed, your home. Um, one of the many things that the president and I share in common is a passion for jobs and the job performance here in the United States, the jobs that are being created in Australia, the jobs that change people's lives. You know, when people get a job, they got choices. And Australia and the United States, we're committed to creating jobs. And whether it's in trade or it's whether in looking at the future and where those jobs are going to come from, we, we want our people to have those economic opportunities. I, c I commend the President on the great work he's done in creating jobs here in the United States. And we're doing the same thing in Australia. And if we want to keep creating jobs, then this, this partnership is a big part of that. And that's why we're pleased to come together here. We share objectives in so many areas. We share common values. We share beliefs. We've shared a wonderful century together, and now we're going to have a, another great century together of mateship. So thank you, Mr. President, and, and uh, thank you for the opportunity for the discussions we've had today. We are very much looking forward to the, uh, the state dinner this evening. And Mrs. Trump, uh, you're doing something special there tonight. We, we don't know if it's the first ever, but as the President said, perhaps the first ever. And that's just another great innovation, which is part of this, uh, this wonderful visit. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Scott. It's a great honor. Uh, go ahead, please. Mr. President, you've been negotiating with the Chinese, and there seems to be a possibility in terms of a China trade deal that they might actually uh, offer some agricultural purchases. Is that going to be enough for you, sir, no. in order to get a deal done? What do you need to see at this point to get that deal past the finish line? Uh, we're looking for a complete deal. I'm not looking for a partial deal. China has been starting to buy our agricultural product, if you noticed, over the last week, uh, and actually some very big purchases. But that's not what I'm looking for. We're looking for the big deal. We've taken it to this level. We're taking in billions and billions of dollars of tariffs. China has devalued their currency, and they're putting out a lot of money into their current into their into their economy. And uh, they have a very bad economy right now. And I don't want them to have a bad economy, but it's the worst in they say 57 years. Uh, two weeks ago it was the worst in 22 years. Now it's 57 years, and it's only going to get worse. Their supply chain is being broken up very badly and companies are leaving because they can't pay the 25 soon to go to 30 percent tariff and we have 30 percent very shortly on 250 billion we have another tariff at a slightly smaller number as you know on on uh, other on about uh, 300 billion dollars worth of goods and products uh, so they would like to do something as you know we're talking a little bit this week talking a lot next week and then uh, top people are going to be speaking the week following. But I'm not looking for a partial deal. I'm looking for a complete deal. Do you feel you need that deal before the election, sir? No, I don't think I need it before the election. I think uh, people know that we're doing a great job. Uh, I've rebuilt the military. Uh, we've uh, — Scott and I were talking about that. We spent one and a half trillion dollars. When I came in, our military was depleted. Frankly, we didn't have ammunition, okay? But our military was in very bad shape. We've rebuilt the military. We've got one of the strongest economies. Uh, Mike Pence actually got some uh, — who's right here, a great vice president. He was 
talking yesterday, and he called me. He says, boy, these numbers, these consumer numbers are incredible. The retail numbers that came out two days ago that really weren't reported were really, I mean, just incredible numbers. You know that very well. That's your world. And, uh, and some other numbers. We're doing very well. Our economy is very strong. And uh, China is being affected very badly. We're not. We're not being affected. In fact, we're taking in many billions of dollars. And China is eating that. You know, China is uh, eating the tariffs because of the devaluation. Now, that doesn't happen with all countries. China is China. And uh, they know what they're doing as well as anybody. My relationship with President Xi is uh, a very amazing one, very good one. But we have right now uh, a little spat. But I think we're doing very well. Our country is doing well. Uh, uh, you look at so many different things. Look at all of the regulation cutting that allows us to do what we did. Look at what happens three days ago where you have an attack like that, and it takes out a big chunk of oil, and the price goes up $4, $5, and now it's heading down rapidly. That tells you that would have happened uh, years ago. It would have gone up $50. It would have doubled. And this was a blip. So it's been really amazing what we've been able to do. I think the voters understand that. I don't think it has any impact on the election. Now, if something happened, I think that would probably be a positive for the election, but uh, that's okay. I do think signing USMCA on a bipartisan basis with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and everybody else, very bipartisan. I think that's very important for our country. And, and I would certainly uh, be willing to say that's a bipartisan deal. But I think that's very important for our manufacturers, for our farmers, even for Unions, they want that deal done. And so hopefully that's going to be put up to a vote very soon. Uh, there will be very little cajoling of the Democrats, because most Democrats want it, too. But the USMCA is ready to be voted on. Uh, it's finished. Mexico has taken their final votes. Canada is willing to do that anytime we want them to. They're all set to go. And we need that for all of the — we need that for our country. It's a great deal. It's a great deal. Thank you. And uh, for the Prime Minister, sir, um, your economy is, to some degree, caught in the cross-currents between the United States and China. What did you say to the President about what your ideal outcome is here for a China trade agreement between the United States and China? Well, thank you. Look, obviously, we're, we're keen to see the United States and China be able to, to come to an agreement. But what is always necessary is deals have got to be fair. Deals have got to be good deals. Deals have got to be sustainable deals. And I think one of the things we've seen, Australia has benefited greatly from the, the economic growth of China. We have a comprehensive strategic partnership with China and a, a free trade agreement with China. And uh, they have grown and they have become you know, a substantive economy in the world. And uh, once you sort of get into that level, uh, then you need to be able to be playing to the same rules of, as those other developed nations. And uh, I think this is, you know, the, the new, new generation of deals I think we'll see China do, which the President has been working on. And he's been working on it for some time, and we wish him well in that process. There are some real serious issues that have to be addressed in that deal. Uh, things like intellectual property, it's a, that's, a, that's a big issue, and it needs to be addressed. So we look forward to them achieving it, and, uh, and, and that providing, I think, the broader certainty and stability to the global economy, which, which all nations will benefit from. And we could do, Scott, a very... A uh, big deal with China, and it could go very quickly, as you know. Mm. But it wouldn't be the appropriate deal. Mm. We have to do it right. And that's a very complicated deal with intellectual property protection. We have to mm. do that and other things. I could leave lots out and have a deal very quickly, but uh, we want to do it right. Please. Yeah. Sure. Andrew. I assume Andrew is a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> That's so why you, Mr. Them. President, the best. Uh, thank you very much for hosting us. Um, also on uh, China and tariffs, um, what do you say to Australian businesses and to Australian people who say that your trade war with Pre President Xi threatens their prosperity? And to the Prime Minister, a, a, a linked question, uh, do you think that uh, Australians are going to be collateral damage in President Trump's uh, tariff war with China? Well, first of all, uh, you know, I look at numbers. I love numbers. And the numbers of Australia are doing incredibly well. You're doing unbelievably well. When we have a deal with China or not, uh, but when we have a deal with China, because they want to make it perhaps more than I want to make it, because I actually love all that billions of dollars that's pouring into our Treasury. Billions and billions of dollars. We've never seen that before from China. It's always been the other way. 
But when — and I'm taking care of our farmers out of that. We're helping our farmers. Our farmers were targeted, and they were targeted for $16 billion. And I made that up to them. We paid them the $16 billion that had tens of billions of dollars left over. So uh, I will say, though, that Australia is doing very well. Uh, if we do end up doing a deal, Australia will do even better. And we were discussing that. But Australia will be one of the big beneficiaries of a deal. And uh, in the meantime, as you know, uh, I did tariff relief with respect to a certain product in particular coming out of Australia. And that's something that we wouldn't do for anybody else. This has been a truly great ally, and we work very well together. But you, your numbers are absolutely fantastic. Your economy is strong, like ours. And I think we're two real examples of mm -hmm of two countries doing extremely well. Some countries aren't doing so well. That's Europe true. is not doing well. Asia is not doing large parts of Asia are not doing well. China is not doing well. Mm. Please. Thanks. Mr. President, Australia is in its 29th year of consecutive economic growth, which is an extraordinary national achievement. And, uh, and we will continue to grow as our most recent, uh, as our most recent national accounts demonstrated. Australia is also very used to dealing with a complex and changing world. And that's why we're diversifying uh, our trade base and have been doing that for many years. I mean, six years ago, when our government came to office, uh, 27 per cent of our trade was covered by agreements around the world. That figure is now 70 per cent, and we're going to take that to 90 per cent. Uh, and that's important, and that's opening up opportunities. So there are, there are ebbs and flows that go in the, in the global economy, and Australia has uh, built up a resilience uh, through the, the broad-based nature in which we're taking our economy to the world. I mean, Australia has never got rich selling things to itself, and we've always had an outward-looking uh, perspective when it comes to engaging our economic opportunities. And a big part of what we've been discussing here is some new opportunities, whether it's in the rare oils, the critical minerals, the frontier technologies, space. You know, this is where jobs are going to be in the future as well. And so we will deal with those ebbs and flows as they come, but the President's right. The arrangement they will come to, and I'm confident they will, uh, with China will be one that will set you know, a new bar in terms of, of how uh, China's economy then deals with a lot of these complicated issues in the future with developed economies like Australia. So we, we look on with interest, and I think ultimately when we arrive at that point, it's going to put global trade on a stronger footing. And Australia's really been so focused on the economy uh, they do minerals. They have uh, incredible wealth in minerals and coal and other things. And they are really at the leading edge of coal technology. Uh, it's clean coal, we call it clean coal, but it's also great for the workers. And things that would happen to, because it was very dangerous years ago and very bad for a lot of people. And uh, you've rectified that 100 percent. It's incredible. I looked, I looked at your statistics the other day, and uh, coal miners are very, very safe in Australia. It's incredible what you've done. In fact, we're looking at what you've done. Uh, but uh, we so can I do want a to, deal on that. I want to go. We'll do a deal. We'll make a deal. Yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you. In uh, the midst of these escalating tensions with Iran, you've now named a new national security advisor, Robert O'Brien. Yes. What is he recommending to you in terms of dealing with the latest strikes on Saudi Arabia and the response? And then secondly, you announced new sanctions on Iran. Secretary Mnuchin said that this affects the last available funds for that regime. Have we now exhausted sanctions in regards to Iran? Well, these are the strongest sanctions ever put on a country. Uh, we are uh, at a level of sanction that is far greater than ever before with respect to Iran. Uh, today we did Central Bank, as you know, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. They're having a lot of problems, not only with us. Uh, they're having problems within their own country, and I think they have a lot of self-made problems. Uh, we are uh, by far the strongest military in the world. Going into Iran would be a very easy decision, as I said before. be very easy, the easiest thing. Uh, most people thought I would go in uh, within two seconds, but plenty of time, plenty of time. In the meantime, they have a lot of problems within Iran. Iran could be a great country, could be a rich country, but they uh, are choosing to go a different way. Uh, they'll be appointed, which they'll be very sorry for that choice. Uh, but I think I'm showing great restraint. A lot of people respect it. Some people don't. Some people say, oh, you should go in immediately. 
and other people are so thrilled at what I'm doing. And I don't do it for anybody. I do it for what's good for the United States, what's good for our allies. And uh, it's working out really very well. As far as Robert is concerned, he's — Robert, maybe you could stand up. Robert O'Brien has done a fantastic job for us uh, with hostage negotiations. Uh, I think we can say that there has never been anybody that's done better than you and I as a combination. We've brought many people home, and we brought them home quickly. Speed is a very important thing, I find, with hostages. It's, uh, it's really something. I had dinner the other night with the Warmbier family, uh, an incredible family. Uh, the whole family and some of Otto's friends, in addition to the family. We had 25 people over on Saturday night, and we did that dinner in Otto — really, in Otto's honor. And it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. First Lady and I — it was very uh, — you know, it was, it was very touching and uh, really very beautiful. We talked about Otto. And uh, I will tell you that uh, — People should have moved faster. And Robert and I were talking about that. Should have moved faster. He was there for a long time. You got to move fast. With hostages, you have to move fast. All of a sudden, it gets very hard for the other side to do anything. And sometimes it's just too late. In the case of Otto, it was very late. We got him home, but he was in horrible, horrible condition. What happened to him was actually incredible, just horrible. Um, but you have to move fast. Robert and I have been really successful. And I, the reason I know him so well, I actually work hard on hostages, I think you would say. I think most presidents wouldn't do that, but I do. These are great, I guess, in almost all cases, American lives. We help other people also. We've also helped other countries with their hostage situation, where we have some strength that they don't. But uh, these are great people, and we get them home. We got them home from North Korea, as you know. And we got them home from a lot of different locations. Egypt, we get them home. We get them home from many different locations. Uh, Turkey. Yeah. President Erdogan was very good, and we got a hostage home. Who, our, our great pastor, who everyone in this room knows and loves. But we've had tremendous success. And uh, what surprised me, I didn't know too many people knew Robert. And when it came time to pick somebody for the position, it's a very critical time. Uh, I had so many people — I shouldn't say this in front of Robert, he'll be embarrassed, but, but I had so many people that called me, and they they recommended Robert O'Brien. So I think he's going to do a great job. And uh, he was here, I can tell you this. He started about uh, 12 minutes after he was chosen. He sat in with us, and he's very much involved now in what we're doing. Uh, one quick follow-up on that in regards to Iran. If sanctions don't work and they continue their malign activity. Are there any other measures outside of a military option that can be taken? That well, I, I don't want to talk about that, but I, I will say I think the sanctions work and the military would work, uh, but that's a very severe form of, of winning. But we win. Nobody can beat us militarily. Nobody can even come close. What we've done for our military in the last three years is incredible. All made in the USA, by the way. And uh, it's, it's really incredible. Uh, our nuclear was getting very tired. They hadn't spent the money on it. And now we have it in, as we would say, tippy-top shape. Tippy-top. It's uh, — we have new, and we have renovated, and it's, uh, it's incredible. And we all should pray that we never have to use it. We should never have to use it. And our military itself is in phenomenal shape. And we have a great gentleman, as you know. Uh, going to be taking over, Joint Chief of Staff. Joe Dunford has been fantastic. He's a great, great man and a friend of mine. Uh, but uh, General Milley is going to be taking over, and uh, it's going to be uh, — we're going to have a little bit of a celebration, both for Joe and for uh, more for everybody. And, you know, as you know, uh, our Secretary of Defense has just come in, Mark Esper, and uh, He's been here for a short period of time, but he's got tremendous energy. He's got it. He knows — he knows it. That's what he's been doing for a long period of time, from the day he graduated, or maybe I should say from the day he started at West Point, where he was a top, top scholar, et cetera. So uh, we have a — we have incredible people. And Steve Mnuchin's here. We did the 
sanctions today, and I think they're probably, Steve, the strongest that have ever been put on a country. We, was, we will certainly never do that to Australia, I promise you. <laughs> then one for the Prime Minister, they, if I may. Mr. Prime Minister, you have been very tough on Huawei, even under pressure. You've been very consistent with the ban, even though you said you have a good working relationship with China and they're important for your economy. Do you plan to continue to support the United States in the tough stance on China? And can you give any more specifics about what you've told the President you would do to help in his measures to reach a fair trade deal? Well, first of all, I mean, we have a the most perfect of relationships with the United States and goes back a century and, and, and more, as the President was reminding us on the lawn this morning. We have a, a comprehensive strategic partnership with China. This is the part of the world in, in which we live. And uh, managing that relationship is important to Australia's national interests. One thing I can always assure you, and I think the President can say the same, we will always, both of us, act in the national interests of our countries. We will always put our country's interests first. And that means engaging countries in our own region, not just economically, but at a people people to level as well. We have a, a lot of operations we do together um, right across the world militarily, and we'll continue to do those. But the focus, I think, at the end of the day has to be what's best for our people. And that means a stable, secure region and the presence of the United States in the Indo-Pacific, where they have been for a very long time, is a stabilising force in the region. And what does that mean? It means that countries can trade with each other, economies can develop, people come out of poverty. Um, the United States has had a, a positive presence in our region, and that's why we always work together, because we share objectives. It isn't a matter of the United States saying to us, we need you to do this, or Australia saying to the United States, we need you to do this. It's about us having shared objectives and looking through the world through a similar lens. And so that just naturally brings us together to focus on the things that promote prosperity. As I started out in my remarks today, we love jobs, the President and I. We love jobs. And we like the jobs here and we like jobs everywhere. And when people have jobs, well, they, they tend to focus a bit more on the things that are going on in their lives every day and, and making sure they can live peacefully with each other. And one uh, of the things important, I think, is uh, during our meeting, uh, we discussed, I said, uh, what percentage of our of your military do you buy from us? And it's, uh, the answer was we work it together yeah. or it's about 100 percent. It's yeah, close it's to 100 percent. And we make the best equipment. He understands that. But it's, uh, it's a real relationship. They buy 100 percent of their military and it's a massive purchase. And it's gotten bigger, I guess you said, the biggest purchase since uh, so World we'll, War II. Yeah, we'll be at 2 percent of GDP next year. And that comes up from what was the lowest level of uh, defence spending as a share of the economy since prior to the Second World War. So it's a $200 billion investment, and a lot of that, that's being built in Australia, but it's also being, being built in partnership with the United States um, and other allies. So it's, a, it's an important uh, part of what we're doing. But I think, I think David Crowe from Australia was next. Thank you very much. David Crowe from the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age. Uh, further on the questions on uh, Iran, Mr. President, you've, you've praised the Australian commitment today uh, to deal with Iran in the Persian Gulf. And in your talks today with Mr. Morrison, did you discuss further military action in order to keep the pressure on Iran? What might those military actions be and what could Australia contribute to that? So Mr. Didn't... Morrison, yeah. on that same Hold issue... Hold on one second. You'll, you'll get a second, Craig. You'll get a... You get a shot at your Prime Minister. <laughs> I'm sure you're looking forward to it. Uh, we didn't discuss too much Iran. Uh, we discussed more trade, more China. Uh, we discussed Afghanistan, where uh, Australia is helping us, and we're slowly reducing in Afghanistan, as people know. Uh, we've been very effective in Afghanistan, and if we wanted to do uh, a certain method of war, we would win that very quickly. But many, many, really tens of millions of people would be killed. Uh, and we think it's unnecessary. But they've been, Australia has been a great help to us in Afghanistan. But we're uh, reducing in Afghanistan. We're reducing in Syria, where we had, you know, we've taken over 100 percent of the caliphate. We have 100 percent. When I came in, it was smaller, but it was a mess. It was all over. And now it's, uh, it's in a position, and I won't repeat what I said before with the prisoners, but we have thousands of ISIS fighters from our work in 
capturing 100 percent of the caliphate. And we're asking the countries from where they came, whether it's Germany or France or other countries, to take those people back, put them on trial, do what they have to do with them. But the United States will not keep thousands and thousands of people for the next possibly 50 years or whatever it may be. Uh, it's going to be up to those countries. We did them a big favor. We went in. We took them down. Uh, the ISIS fighters, in the end, weren't very good fighters against the United States. But we have thousands of them, and we want them to be taken over by Germany, France, and all of those countries from where they came. Okay? Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Morrison, on the same issue of, uh, of Iran, um, are you open to further military action against Iran, or is the Australian commitment solely contained to a freedom of navigation patrol exercise? Well, as the President said, I mean, there are, there are no further activities planned or, or requested for assistance from Australia, so the question to that extent is moot. And I want to commend the President, who's demonstrating, as he said in the earlier um, press conference in the Oval Office, restraint. Uh, there are other measures that he and, and the Secretary have uh, announced today, and they are pursuing those, those channels. So the, the calibrated, I think, very measured response that the United States is taking is, has been a matter for them and, and, uh, and obviously at any time when, when issues are raised with us as, as, as an ally we, we, we consider them on their merits at the time in, in Australia's national interest. Um, so I think that's, that's where that's heading. Well thank you very much and Jennifer thank you very much. First Lady thank you and I hope you're going to be able to see tonight to the media because really it's going to be a beautiful evening in honor of Australia and the Morrisons. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.